Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation right here. And I'm going to talk a little bit uh, vaguely about this equation because I don't want to give you too many hints. I want to give you an opportunity to solve this. So the question is, do you have the algebra skills to solve this equation? Hopefully you do. And uh, if you think you could do it, maybe pause the video and put your uh, answers in the comment section. But um, this is certainly uh, appropriate for those of you at the Algebra 2 college algebra level. Uh, and yeah, maybe even the Algebra 1 level. So if you're not quite sure if you study this, just stick around for a couple minutes. You're certainly going to learn something. But uh, anyways, I'm going to cover this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I've been teaching math for decades. I really like to think of myself as explaining math in a super clear and understandable way so anyone and everyone can be successful in mathematics. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you're preparing for any kind of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, maybe a teacher certification exam. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you absolutely must check out my homeschool math program. We were just recently voted number one for middle school and high school mathematics uh, by a major uh, homeschool publication. Very excited about that. And if you don't have any math notes, which you should have math notes, but if you don't have any math notes right now, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into this equation. And uh, in algebra, you have to uh, solve all sorts of equations, okay? And I'm going to set this problem up before we actually look at the uh, actual solution. Uh, we want to kind of think about any equation in algebra and really kind of think about two uh, questions, okay? And the first one is this, okay? When we're looking at this equation, before you just start doing things, you want to ask yourself, what type uh, of an equation is this, okay? So what type of an equation are we looking at? So that's the first question, okay? So if you know what that is or the answer to that, hopefully you said, oh, this is a polynomial equation. Because if you said something like, oh, this is uh, an exponential uh, equation or a logarithmic equation or systems of equation or quadratic equation, all that stuff is important because uh, based upon, you know, what type of equation this is, it's going to lead us to our second question we have to ask ourselves is, okay, how do we solve, you know, what's the ways uh, to solve a, uh, in this case, a polynomial equation? Okay, so ways to solve this type of an equation, well, what type of equation is it? Well, that's the first question we need to ask ourselves. So anytime you're looking at an equation, in algebra, before you just start doing things, really stop and make sure you can identify what this is. That's why it's so critical to take notes, okay, because you study all sorts of types of equation uh, equations in algebra. Matter of fact, uh, let's just do something real uh, fast here. Let's just name a few uh, type of equations you study. Well, you study linear equations. That's like your basic equations, right? You study quadratic equations. And each one of these, uh, you take a different approach to solving. You solve systems of equations, or you study those systems. And this is like at the algebra one level. Uh, you study radical equations, rational equations. And then as you continue on to more advanced algebra, you study a higher order polynomial equations, exponential equations, logarithmic equations. I can go on and on. So you can see all these different type of equations you need to be able to identify. Okay, and the way we solve a quadratic equation is completely different than the way we solve a radical equation. So this is why you need to take notes and write down the procedures to approach these equations. Okay, all right. So I think this is, uh, you know, going over this is the real value of this video. Yeah, you can see the solution, but if you don't understand the kind of big picture thinking in terms of solving a um, problem, then you know, you're not going to be uh, kind of on top of your algebra game. And hopefully this video will get you focused to be thinking about equations in this way. All right. So with that being said, let's get into this again. This is a polynomial equation. And uh, what are some ways to solve a uh, polynomial equation? All right, let's answer that right now. Well, uh, one of the first things you always want to try to do is factor. Okay, so factoring is awesome. Uh, so this is going to be a great technique. Can, now, sometimes you can't factor. Then you're going to have to use different techniques. So quadratic equations, for example, are a type of polynomial uh, equation. They're just a second-degree polynomial equation. 
So sometimes uh, you may have to use, for example, the quadratic uh, formula, okay? And then there's some other theorems and stuff that we need to know, like the rational root theorem and some other things. So you need to know quite a bit about polynomials. Polynomials are very, very um, widely used in mathematics and algebra, algebra 2, and even like in calculus and whatnot. So it's a good idea to know a lot about uh, polynomials. So let's get into this problem now. Okay. So the first thing I'm, um, I'm looking at this problem saying, okay, this is a polynomial equation. All right, good. Now, what do I know about polynomial equations? All right. Well, hopefully the first thing that comes to mind is that the degree of the polynomial, this happens to be a third degree polynomial. Okay. That's how many answers or how many solutions we're going to have. So this is going to have three solutions. And the second thing that we know about a polynomial in terms of its solutions is it could be uh, either real or comple uh, complex or a combination of such. We just know that we are looking for three answers here. Okay. Now, what makes this a polynomial? Well, that's kind of a different uh, whole another video in and of itself. But uh, basically, we have a variable term and the highest powers of the powers of these variable terms are positive integers. And so that's just a real quick, quick identification of polynomials. But you need to know a lot about polynomials. If you're not quite sure uh, why this is a polynomial, then you need to kind of do some additional review. I have um, a lot of other videos in my algebra playlist and pre-algebra playlist on polynomials. So make sure you review that if you're not quite sure. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at, I'm like, okay, this is a polynomial equation. And I know I need to be uh, finding three solutions here. So I'm not done unless I find three solutions. As a matter of fact, that is part of something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, okay, which basically states the number of solutions a polynomial is going to have is going to be equal to its highest degree. Again, we're dealing with a third degree polynomial. So we're looking for three solutions. It could be real numbers, complex numbers, or imaginary numbers, or a combination of uh, uh, the both, okay, or both, right? So now, uh, from that point, I'm uh, looking at this, and this part of the problem, being that this is equal to zero, that's a nice little uh, hint, okay? Uh, you're saying, hmm, that's equal to zero. We like things when they're equal to zero because if we can factor this, we can use the zero product property, okay? And uh, in this particular video, we're actually, or this particular problem, we're going to be using that zero product property. So, okay, so we got a polynomial. It's set equal to zero. So the first thing I'm uh, looking at here is can I factor this? Can I factor this? Yes, you can, okay? And if you're looking at this and saying, well, I don't know what, you know, I'm going to gain by factoring it. Just start factoring. Sometimes you don't really uh, see the final um, uh, outcome. Just start factoring it in, and then sometimes that reveals the next thing to do. Don't try to see the entire process play out in front of you. So what's the, uh, what's the obvious thing that we can factor here? We can factor out a 3V, okay? So that is the greatest common factor, 3V. So that's going to be 3v times 1 over 16v squared minus 25 in parentheses. So that's equal to 0. Now, to check your work, you can always multiply back in 3v times 1 over 16v squared. I would get back to this. And then 3v times 25, I would get back to 75v. Okay, so always, you know, double check your factoring if you're not quite sure by multiplying um, your greatest common factor, whatever factor uh, you end up with. So I'm like, okay, this is good. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Now at this point, okay, there's a couple different ways you can approach this. I have one factor here, all right, being multiplied by this right here is another factor, and this is being equal to zero. So you have to recognize that this is a perfect situation for the zero product property. So that's basically A times B is equal to zero. Well, if I'm multiplying two things together and the answer is zero, well, this has to be zero and, uh, and or this has to be zero or both of these are zero. You can't multiply two things together and get uh, zero as your answer so, uh, without this being zero or both of these uh, being zero. So we're going to set each of these factors equal to zero and solve. Okay, this is like the power of the zero product property and it's going to come up a lot in algebra. So 
when this is equal to zero, now if this wasn't equal to zero, we couldn't be thinking in terms of the zero product property. So we have 3v times uh, this factor, but looking at this right here, this binomial, uh, hopefully some of you are saying that looks like the difference of two squares, the a squared minus b squared. And if you recognize that pattern there, you could say, okay, isn't that equal to a plus b times a minus b? This is part of your special factoring rules that you need to know. And that would be excellent thinking. Okay, so we got 3v times this, but we're not done factoring because I can factor this expression here by using the difference of two squares. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so we got 3v. And uh, what you need to do is to take the square root of both of these uh, terms. So the square root of 1 over 16 is going to be 1 or 1, 1 over 16v squared is 1 fourth v plus the square root of 25, of course, is 5. So it's going to be 1 fourth v plus 5 times 1 fourth v minus 5. This is the result of the difference of two squares. Anything that I'm talking about that you're not quite following, make sure you take a mental note and follow through with this. I got a lot of additional videos on all these topics on my YouTube channel, or maybe you just want to take like my Algebra 2 or College Algebra course, or maybe even my Algebra 1 course as well. Okay, so we're almost there. Remember, when you're talking about factoring anything, you want to fully factor till you can't factor anymore. Although I could set this factor here equal to zero. That's not the way to go. We want to factor everything out. Now, being that I can't factor anymore, I'm going to take this factor, set that equal to zero, this factor, set this equal to zero, this factor, and set this equal to zero because this times this times this is zero. Okay, so when it comes to the zero product property, um, you set each of those respective factors equal to zero, and now we're going to solve for each one of those variables. So we got 3v is equal to zero. That's easy. v is equal to zero here. Uh, 1 fourth v plus 5 is equal to zero. I can move that 5 over. 1 fourth v is equal to negative 5. Now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4. I get v is equal to negative 20. And then I solve this nice basic equation, 1 fourth v minus 5 equals zero. I got 1 fourth v is equal to positive 5. Multiply both sides of the equation by 4. I get v is equal to 20. There are, uh, there is my three solutions. Okay, so v equals zero, v equals negative 20, and v equals a positive 20. Remember, we're looking for three um, uh, solutions for this third degree polynomial. Okay, so hopefully uh, this makes sense. And if you got this all right uh, before I even did this problem, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face with the good old 1984 Mohawk, okay? Now, I don't know when they stopped wearing Mohawks, but it was, uh, maybe like the late 80s, but they kind of went away pretty much in the 90s, at least uh, from what I can remember, but they were pretty cool, okay? Just like your ability to do this problem. Matter of fact, I'm gonna throw in an A plus and 100%, so nice job, okay? Now, if you didn't know how to do this problem, but you learned something, well, that's the whole idea behind this video, okay? Just remember, when it comes to solving any equation in algebra, you need to uh, uh, understand the differences of the different type of equations you're studying. And how could you possibly understand all of this, you know, polynomials, log, uh, logarithmic equations, radical equations, rational equations, systems equations, you know, all of this stuff without taking notes. This is why I'm such a, a big stickler on note-taking, okay? You have to be excellent at note taking and if you improve your notes everything is going to improve in terms of your um, mathematics uh, your grades your skills your test scores etc so hopefully this video helps you out and if that is the case consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even subscribing to my youtube channel i've been on youtube for uh, 10 plus years have over a thousand plus math videos basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my uh, content. I make it for you. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.